Assalamu alaikum. This is the presentation for medical students by Dr. Mutaz Ahmed Umar and today's topic is head and neck space infections. Head and neck space infections include the clotted abscess, Ludwig's angina, peritonsal abscess, retropharyngeal abscess and parapharyngeal abscess. Parotid abscess. It is the separation of the parotid space. Deep cervical fascia splits into two layers, superficial and deep, to enclose the parotid gland and its associated structures. Parotid space lies deep to its superficial fascia. So this is a picture showing the parotid gland and the parotid duct, the stenson's duct, which opens against or opposite the second molar tube. Parotid space include parotid gland and, and its associated parotid lymph node, the facial nerve, external carotid artery, and the retromandibular vein. Etiology Dehydration, particularly in the post surgical cases and debilitated patients with stasis of salivary flow, is the predisposing cause. However, infection from the oral cavity can also travel via the stenson's duct to invade the parotid gland. Multiple small abscesses may form in the parenchyma and then they may coalesce to form a single abscess. Bacteriology The most common organism is the Staphylococcus aureus, but streptococci, anaerobic organisms, and rarely the gram negative organisms have also been cultured. Clinical features include fever, which may be high grade, then pain and swelling in the parotid area along with redness and induration. Tenderness can be felt in the parotid area around the angle of mandible. Opening of the stenson's duct becomes congested and it may exude pus when pressure is applied externally on the parotid gland. Diagnosis Diagnosis of the abscess can be made by doing the blood CBC which may show neutrophilia, then ultrasound of the parotid area, CT scan which may be contrast enhanced and aspiration of the pus can be done to isolate or culture the organism to look for the sensitivity. Treatment include the correction of dehydration, improvement in the oral hygiene with the use of regular mouth wash rinses promotion in the salivary flow, then intravenous broad spectrum antibiotics should be instituted. Surgical drainage of the abscess is carried out under local or general anesthesia by giving a preauricular incision. The second important topic is the Ludwig's angina. It is the infection of the submandibular space. So the applied anatomy of submandibular space is that it lies between the mucous membrane of the floor of mouth and tongue on one side and superficial layer of the deep cervical fascia extending between the heart bone and mandible on the other side. It is divided into two compartments by the mylohyoid muscle. One is the sublingual compartment which is above the mylohyoid and other is the submaxillary and submental compartment which lies below the mylohyoid. However, the two compartments, they are continuous around the posterior border of the mylohyoid muscle. This picture is showing this mylohyoid muscle and the two compartments. The upper one is the sublingual and the lower one is the submaxillary and submental compartments and posteriorly both compartments they are joining. Etiology Dental infections they account for 80% of the cases. Roots of premolars often lie above the attachment of mylohyoid and cause sublingual space infection, while roots of the molar teeth extend up to or below the mylohyoid line and primarily, primarily cause submaxillary space infection. Other causes may include the submandibular sialadenitis, injuries of the oral mucosa, and fractures of the mandible. Bacteriology It is basically a mixed infection involving both the aerobes and the anaerobes. The common organisms are the alpha hemolytic streptococci, staphylococci, bacterial troop, while 
Rarely, Haemophilus influenza, Escherichia coli, and Pseudomonas aeruginosa can also affect. Clinical features: There will be difficult, marked difficulty in swallowing, or dinophagia, with varying degrees of crispness. When infection is localized to the sublingual space, structures in the floor of mouth are swollen, and the tongue seems to push up and back. However, when the infection spreads to the submaxillary space, submental and submandibular regions become swollen and tender and impart a woody hard feel. Tongue is progressively pushed upwards and backwards and can threaten the airway, along with appearance of laryngeal edema. So, this is the picture in which this all submandibular, submental, submandibular area is swollen. Treatment, admission with IV line maintenance, intravenous systemic antibiotics covering both the aerobes and anaerobes, antipyretics and anti-inflammatory drugs including the paracetamol, NSAIDs and steroids, incision and drainage of the abscess. So there are two ways to do the incision and drainage either intraoral or sublingual or via an external approach. So if the infection is still localized to the sublingual space then intraoral incision is given. However, if the infection involves the submaxillary space externally the abscess is drained out by a transverse incision extending from one angle of mandible to the other. Trache tracheostomy may be needed if the airway is compromised or endangered. Complication It can lead to parapharyngeal and retropharyngeal abscess due to spread of infection to these spaces and then to the mediastinum, airway obstruction as already mentioned due to the laryngeal edema or swelling or the pushing back of the tongue, then septicemia can occur and aspiration pneumonia. Thank you.